So over here at the homestead, we are 100% uh, off grid. We get all of our energy from uh, solar panels and wind turbine. And then we have a, a propane powered backup generator too for when there's no wind or sun. First thing we have is a one kilowatt uh, wind turbine. Um, it's on a 50 foot pole out there. And uh, this is the charge controller and energy center, center for, for that particular thing. Um, and here we are, this is kind of the, the brains of the whole operations. It's the operations center. Um, we have inverters, two inverters. Um, this is the solar side, so this is all of our inputs. And um, then this is all of our outputs. We have the dual stacked inverter so we can run 220 power. Um, and that's what this is a transformer. So it combines each one of these as 110. And so the transformer combines and then it kicks out of that. And then this is just regular AC power, right? Your standard house household power. All this stuff's all, all direct current, all DC. When we first moved in, we had uh, about 1100 uh, watts of solar out on the tracker out there. And that's kind of on that post and it will adjust and tilt and spin to track the sun to get the maximum amount, uh, amount of power out of that. Um, then from there, we went and we upgraded. We added uh, roughly another 3,000 uh, watts of solar on top of the garage. And that's where we added these two charge controllers for that section. This was our original section. And so this whole thing comes as a, as a kit from, uh, it's all Outback gear that we use but it comes with a rack and um, the charge control the input side and then the output side and it's all it comes as one piece and you just mount it up to the wall it's a pretty pretty slick deal it's pretty nice but you know we kind of outgrew it and then that's why we we added this little gutter box over here with the um, with the extra charge controllers we used up all the space in this panel for our um, for our charge controllers, our um, solar array inputs and stuff like that. So we added another little shot over there. Uh, and now we got room for at least one more uh, solar bank if we need it. We can add in here. All right, so these two cabinets right here, these are our battery banks. Um, we run a kind of a, a hybrid battery system with uh, nickel iron batteries in this section. There are a, um, they're the Edison batteries, is another name for them, and they're an alkaline battery, right? And so what, what happens with that is they, they last kind of forever. So like these ones that we got here, I'll kind of pop the top on it here, take a look. But, so these ones we got from Zapworks out of Montana, and these are a refurbished Edison battery built by the Edison Battery Company, which went out of business when, uh, I think it's an Exide battery bottom back in the mid 70s. So the, the newest one of these is like 40 years old and the oldest could be up to, you know, 100 years old. So these are, they're, they're a high dollar battery. They're a low energy density. That whole bank, you see they're roughly three feet high and this thing is a good six feet long. And that's all makes up 124 volt battery and that's a 500 amp battery on this side we have the more traditional lead acid batteries um, you can see each one of these there so this is another 24 volt uh, battery bank but each one of these is about 1400 amps so you can see it's considerably more energy dense those batteries but the problem with these is you know under ideal conditions they'll last maybe 12 years and that's if you're babying them right when you get one cell goes out in there the whole bank gets drawn down to that whereas these ones you can kind of mix and match if one for whatever reason goes south with the uh, nickel iron battery you just pull that cell out drop a new one in and it doesn't even skip a beat they'll take a, a lot higher charge you know, with the 24 uh, volt system, you could charge it at like 32 volts and it just boils water. That's it. You know, you just have to add more water. It doesn't really harm the longevity of the, of the battery bank. Whereas with the lead acid batteries, 
they're a little bit more temperamental. You can't charge them at that high a rate very often. Correct me if I'm wrong here, that the Edison batteries that you have over here, the nickel iron ones, mm -hmm. they also are beneficial in that you can draw their battery charge down yes. lower, whereas the lead acid, I think you don't really want to go below 50%, 80% right. is more recommended, where um, yes. the Edison's you can draw really low, which means set them and forget them, and yeah. you're not worried about keeping them topped off all the time. And absolutely, that's that's you know, one of the big things is those Edison batteries. They're super robust. They'll take a ton of abuse. Um, you know the that's kind of the big thing on them. They they take a ton of abuse. They they last. You know, like I was saying earlier. You know the the newest one of these is 40, 40 years old, right? Um, so they last and last for a long time. The big drawback on them is uh, cost, right? They're an expensive battery. They're a low energy density. You know, this one is like a third the size amperage wise of that, and it's taken up easily twice as much room. So they're not sitting up on anything. No, they're touching if you the look floor. right over there, you can kind of, might be able to see all the way down. <laughs> they're all just kind of sitting on the floor. How much do they weigh? Um, each one of those cells dry was, I want to say about 150 pounds, and then they have uh, two to three gallons of uh, electrolyte in them. That's another thing with the, with the electrolyte in them. It's uh, it's an uh, alkaline electrolyte. It's uh, potassium hydroxide (KOH), and it is not toxic. I mean, at the the concentration it's in right now it'll burn you it'll do stuff like that but it's actually um once it goes bad you can dilute it and spray it on your fields it's it's a potassium fertilizer right um the lead acid batteries is sulfuric acid right and it's it's nasty stuff um and it actually it eats the battery over time that's why they don't last as long whereas with the uh the potassium hydroxide it's a you know it's kind of a buffering solution. It doesn't doesn't break down your electrodes and your diodes, so the battery maintains a lot longer. With both of these batteries, as you charge them and they're um, they're storing electricity, one of the byproducts of that is um, is off gassing. It. They off gas hydrogen. Both of them do the lead acid and the nickel iron. Um, as the electrolyte boils in there, right? As you're pumping electricity, the amperage into it. Um, and so what you end up with is hydrogen, right? It, it splits the water, right? And it splits it into oxygen and hydrogen, right? It's H2O. So you got two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen. Well, oxygen's great, right? You breathe it, it's good for you, it's wonderful. Um, hydrogen, think, um, the, was the Hindenburg blimp? <laughs> It's flammable it explodes um, and so you have to have a closed case with those and you have to have venting and so what we have here if you see over in the corner this goes to the outside air and it's uh, there's an inline uh, fan in there to vent all that hydrogen out and once you get out into the open air it dissipates quickly and it's not a, a fire hazard whereas inside of this room this would pretty quickly fill with hydrogen and as soon as you anything sparked in there it would explode and so what we have set up is kind of we've got a push fan here that pulls air from the room across the uh, the battery bank into that corner and then a pull fan so we, we've got kind of a redundancy there to make sure that we're pushing all that hydrogen out of here but that's um, that's the one major consideration that you got to think of unless you have a sealed battery um, is off gassing and if you're gonna have your battery bank inside the house which you know there's positives and negatives to that like the big negative is there's that potential there the positive is you get uh, stable temperatures especially down here we're kind of underground in the basement surrounded on three sides by dirt right and these batteries they work best at 
you know, especially lead acid batteries, about 70 degrees, right? Room temperature, they, they work best at and they have the longevity. Um, you know, the nickel iron batteries, um, super robust, like I was saying earlier, they're not as concerned with um, freezing and thawing cycles and stuff like that. And so that goes kind of back to what you were saying about uh, kind of a, a part-time off-grid type cabin. Um, you're, you're not going to have that problem with these guys. Here, is this meeting all of your electricity needs for your house? This does, like on a, on a nice sunny day, especially during the winter time like this when it's a little bit cooler out, your um, solar panels work at a, a little higher efficiency. Um, we'll have plenty of power to, you know, last for, um, without being like conservative and stuff like that, it'll last for a couple days, all right? Um, you can see we, we run big, chest freezers, stand-up freezers, we have two refrigerators, um, there's all that stuff that goes with, you know, producing your own food and having that homestead, it's, it can be energy intensive as far as stuff like that goes, um, and it fills all of our needs for power.